Hello everybody, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. Listen, I'm compelled to let you know that the Lord truly loves you. Listen, and the reason I'm led to tell you this is oftentimes in the course of one's life, we have these poignant moments where you may feel overlooked, not appreciated, or maybe loneliness tries to make a visitation to your mind, trying to convince you that everybody, and I mean everybody, has, has moved on from you. What we need is to embrace the love that only Jesus provides. Because the love that Jesus provides is one that sustains the test of time. Because his love satisfies, his love purifies. Yes, the love of Jesus is an everlasting love. And his love carries you through the different times and seasons that one lives in. You see, I'm reminded of a passage of scripture that lets all of us know from around the world to know that his love travels with you throughout the length of your life. Because the reality is, throughout our life, many things change. <laughs> Companies come and go. Relationships come and go. Fashion changes from year to year. The vehicles we drive only have a life expectancy of just a few years. Do you know how it is, people of God? All of these changes, even our hair from having a big afro down to the skin on your head, change continues to happen. And so the reality is that things that we try to hold on so tight to oftentimes leave our grasp. And so in this passage of scripture, I pray, my prayer is people of God, that it will encourage you to really understand the significance that God plays within your life. And this is found in Psalms 139, a very familiar passage of scripture. But I believe within my soul that if we read these verses from time to time, it will give you the confidence to know that no matter what the wind blows, no matter when the seasons change in your life, you can rest assured that God will always be with you. It says here in Psalms 139 verses 7 through 14, one of my favorite passages of scripture, it gives me a visual picture of how far God will be with me, how, how far he will go to stay with me. It reads in verse 7, Where could I go to get away from your spirit? Where could I go to escape your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. Obvious, right? If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. <laughs> if I could fly, on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean. Even there your hand would guide me. Even there your strong hand, hand would hold me tight. If I said the darkness would definitely hide me, the light will become night all around me. Even then, the darkness isn't too dark for you. <laughs> Nighttime would shine bright as day 
Because darkness is the same as light to you. <laughs> you are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. You see, in every season of your life, people of God, whether you're on the mountain <laughs> or down in the valley, whether you have obtained great wealth or you are on your last dime, <laughs> when you stick your hands in your pocket and only see lint, <laughs> whether thousands celebrate your success or when no one else is around you, you can count on God to be with you every step of the way. And for me, <laughs> and for me, he constantly teaches me. He shows me. He shows his goodness and his mercy. He teaches me when I am in I am deep in my sins. There is the moment where he shows me that there is a better way. So I want to encourage all of our listeners from around the world to know that no matter the various trials that you're faced with, no matter how difficult life becomes, no matter what situation that you're currently in right now, no matter what people have told you about your situation, that there is no way out. Understand James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5, where it says, and he's speaking about us, people of God. He says, my brothers and sisters, think of the various tests you encounter as occasions for joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking in nothing. But anyone who needs wisdom, anyone who needs wisdom should ask God, whose very nature is to give to everyone without a second thought, without keeping score. Wisdom will certainly be given to those who ask. James 1 verses 2 through 5. I want you guys to hear me and hear me loudly. God's wisdom is our great teacher. And God's wisdom will be with you in those dark moments. Because his wisdom will shine through the darkness. <laughs> yes, it will. And give encouragement to your soul. So people of God, we are excited as you can tell. I'm excited. I'm honored that you have tuned in to Full of Life Ministries. And the Lord is doing tremendous things for this ministry. All because of you, your love, your generosity, your faithfulness. I'm here to let you know we appreciate all of you who tune in each week for these episodes that the Lord has given us to encourage you, to inspire you, to uplift you, and to empower you to live a full and meaningful life. So listen, people of God. As Thanksgiving Day approaches us, and I know many of you are excited for the time when you can celebrate and thank the Lord for all of his many blessings and to celebrate the life that he has given all of us. 
to be able to really enjoy your family. You know, you work hard all year long for moments like these where you're able to sit down and enjoy your family and your friends, you know, sit around and eat a lot of food. <laughs> I love Thanksgiving. <laughs> you know, it's good because it's the chance where we're able to just relax and enjoy the day. So for today or tonight's episode, the Lord impressed upon me, people of God, the need to talk about really understanding that our hearts and mind need to be aligned with his truth. I want to say that one more time. We really have to understand that we have to examine ourselves to make sure that our hearts and our mind are in line with God's truth. You see, as we talk about Thanksgiving, it's important to know that in order to give thanks to the Lord, your heart has to be aligned to God's truth. It's very simple, people of God. Yet oftentimes we fall short. That's the reality. We fall short because we've allowed different situations and circumstances to create an imbalance where we don't always show appreciation or gratitude. And we live in this funk. We live our lives with a heaviness of heart. Because oftentimes, many times, our heart is not in the right place. It is sad to see the world that we live in, to see our society crumbling right before our eyes. Because many people, their heart is not in the right place. They look for material things to bring satisfaction. They look for alcohol and drugs. They try to suppress their pain by womanizing, by cheating on their taxes, trying to gain the upper hand. But when you do these types of behaviors, your heart is not in the right place. And statistics tells us that during the end of the year, Celebrations like Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. We have within our society individuals who are very, they're very depressed, even suicidal because of the season, because of the times that they're dealing with, because their heart is not aligned with God's truth. When your heart's not open for God, when your heart is not open for God to heal you and to set you free from those toxins that, that live within our very being. You know, toxins are gases. It's poison. And if you get exposed to these toxins in the natural sense, it could bring great pain to your life spiritually so we have these toxins within us we're bitter we're angry we're envious we're jealous we're selfish we're greedy those toxins begin to wear on you you begin you begin to fall apart at the seams you begin to crack under the pressure. We have to understand that God wants to heal you. He wants to restore you. He wants to set you free. And he wants to love on you. That's the reality of where we are. And so, I want to share with you a, a scripture. And it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. And on the last episode, I briefly talked about this scripture because I believe that this particular scripture deals with our heart. It really deals with being 
unbalanced, you know, out of line, out of sorts. And we have to understand understand that in order to be able to enjoy these moments where we should celebrate and thank the Lord for all of his many blessings, this scripture is a teaching moment. And it comes from the throne of God because it deals with our heart and mind. 2 Corinthians 13th chapter in the 5th verse, it says, Examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Don't you understand that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I want to read that verse one more time. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. It tells us, examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Don't you understand that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you failed the test. It, it's important to examine your heart and mine. It's imperative to allow God's word to test you, to examine you because Jesus Christ is in us. But if your hearts, if your heart is not in the right place, guess what? You can miss the opportunity to receive the love and the knowledge that only Jesus can provide for your soul. And so today or tonight's episode is one where we can get examined, we can analyze our missteps, we can examine our mistakes, and where we can make the necessary changes in order to receive all of the blessings that the Lord wants to provide for your life. And so today, or tonight's episode, is entitled, Heart in the Right Place. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to say it like this. Is your heart in the right place? Let's take a quick commercial break (laughs) and we'll be right back with the episode entitled Heart in the Right Place. Hello, hello. My name is Christopher. I'm the editor of Full of Life Ministries San Diego podcast. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. But I would also like to say that if you would like any prayer, any words of encouragement, or would just like to reach out in any way, you can email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Also, we have a Twitter account. Our handle is at fulloflifesd. And feel free to reach out. We would love to hear from you. And lastly, I would like to say if you like what you're hearing and would like to donate, you can donate on any one of our pages. If you go to any of our pages, Spotify, Google, Spreak, or any of that, there should be a link that allows you to do so if that interests you. That's all for me. So thank you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, we are back. And so let's get into today or tonight's episode entitled Heart in the Right Place. Listen, the word heart occurs over a thousand times in the Bible, making it the most common word in God's word. The heart represents the physical in which there would be no life without a heart. It also covers our intellect, our emotional state of being. And the heart represents morality that comes straight from God. Spiritually so, I want for us to really understand and grasp this understanding of God. You see, people of God, the Lord is the great examiner. Since he is the creator of our very being, 
He understands us better than we even know ourselves. And the Lord wants to make sure that our priorities are in line with his truth. There's a scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. This passage of scripture gives us a clear picture of God's focus with regards to our heart. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. This is the Lord speaking. He says to Samuel, have no regard for his appearance. Have no regard for his appearance. And this is the Lord. The Lord is really referring to a man by the name of Eliab. And he says, have no regard for his appearance or stature because I haven't selected him. Talking about Eliab. God doesn't look at things like humans do. <laughs> humans own I'm, I'm sorry. Humans see only what is visible to the eyes. But the Lord sees into the heart. Humans see only what is visible to the eyes. But the Lord sees into the heart. You see, people of God, Eliab was considered tall, very tall, and good looking. And in Samuel's mind, he considered Eliab an obvious choice to succeed Saul. Saul was in charge. He was the king. As you can tell, Samuel's heart was not in the right place. Because he was focusing on the outer appearance. God tells Samuel, have no regard for his appearance. <laughs> Stop looking at individuals, people of God, on their outer appearance. People have become intimidated by people because of their outer appearance. I remember a time when I was young, I was in high school, and I was about to make the basketball team, and these new recruits that joined the team, their outfits all match. They had the nice shoes, they had the nice clothing, they looked apart, the and it intimidate, intimidated me greatly until we started playing. Then I realized that it's not about the outer appearance that makes one a great player. It is the dedication to the sport is what makes a great player. It's the passion for becoming successful. It's the dedication to the craft. It is making a concerted effort to do your very best to perform at the highest level. I had to realize that at 17 years old, God had to show me, stop looking at the outer appearance and focus on the right things and make sure your heart is in the right place. Because many of us allow the our appearance to hold us back from opportunities that the Lord has set up for all of us because how we how we view things and all because our heart is not in the right place, we potentially lose a chance at experiencing something that will bring blessings to your life and bring glory to God's name. Now listen, people of God, the heart can also be tempted by something that could be, let's say, detrimental to your life. <laughs> yes, your heart could be tempted and the Lord can see that your heart is tempted. 
by something that isn't good for you. Now, Proverbs 6, chapter and the 25th verse tells us, it says, do not lust in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. <laughs> I can hear all the men around the world understand this. If your heart, if your heart is not in the right place, you could be victimized and enticed by something that in the end causes you great harm. You see, I often tell young men to always pray when you become attracted to a young lady <laughs> because God knows exactly what you need and in the time that you need it. Prayer changes things. Praying to God and allowing God to communicate back to you, he can tell you exactly if your heart is in the right place and that you're not lured by lust, that you're not captivated so much by her beauty, but that you understand that you pray to God, is this person, is this person that I'm about to meet, will they bring glory to your name? God says, yes, go for it. <laughs> but if no, make sure that your heart is in the right place. King David was lured by Bathsheba. <laughs> Samson was enticed by Delilah. And so it's important to make sure that you have your heart in the right place. Because prayer gives you the peace that you need concerning your desires. Psalms 34, I'm sorry, Psalms 37 and 4 tells us, delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And lastly, it's important to give thanks in all circumstances and listen to the Spirit because the Spirit will give you sound advice. And we're referring to the Holy Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 18 through 24 tells us, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't suppress the Spirit. Don't brush off Spirit-inspired messages, but examine, there's that word again, examine everything carefully and hang on to what is good. Avoid every kind of evil. Now may the God of peace himself cause you to be completely dedicated to him and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept intact and blameless at our Lord Jesus Christ coming. The one who was calling you is faithful and will do this. Hallelujah. And so in closing, take an examination, people of God, to see where you are. Look for opportunities to improve your overall spiritual health. Examine your heart to make sure it is in the right place. Because the Lord's desire is to keep your heart and mind intact and blameless before the Lord comes back. And guess what, people of God? He's calling you. <laughs> I want to say that one more time. The Lord God is calling you to a higher place. And he's looking for those who are faithful to do and follow his will for your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for your love, for your kindness and your tender mercies. We pray tonight 
that the people who heard from you will begin to examine their lives, that they will begin to examine their heart to see if it's in the right place. Help them to realize that Jesus resides within them and that he needs people, young men, young women, boys, girls, elderly, whoever it may be. He is looking for those who realize that they have drifted away and done some things that were not aligned with his truth. Help us to embrace this new way of living, oh God. Help us to realize that if we've drifted away from your truth, realign us. Help us to become more and more like you because we want you to take control of our lives so we can bring you glory in every aspect of our lives. We give you praise in advance for what you're going to do. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, this is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled, Heart in the Right Place. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that you really did enjoy this particular episode entitled, Heart in the Right Place. If you have enjoyed this episode and all of the episodes that we put out weekly, Please share these episodes, these podcasts with your friends and your family, whoever it may be. Allow God's word to minister a message of hope that will bring change and reconciliation and freedom and to actually impact people from all around the world because of your love. We thank you for all those who tune in weekly. People of God, we are praying for you. Continue to pray for us. And guess what? Let's continue to do this. In Jesus' name, God bless.